My visa got approved. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be talking about my US visa application. I'm gonna be focusing on three main things, which is the application process, before the interview, like the preparation, and then during the interview. And I'm gonna try to answer the most commonly asked questions, like how long is the waiting time to get an appointment, what are the questions asked, and what are the documents needed. To those who are planning to apply for a US visa, either in Madrid or Barcelona or wherever you are, I put the US visa application link below. So let's start. I applied for the US visa last March 2023, so that's like almost a year ago. Because when I looked up the wait period in Madrid, it said that it was 333 days. And I actually checked a couple days ago and now it's like 500 something days. So I'm not sure if the process is taking longer than usual or I don't know what's going on. But so far in Madrid, that's what it says. This is for the B2 visa. I don't know about any other kinds of visa, but this is for B1 or B2 visitor visa. When I started my application in March, 2023, I was hoping that I could get my visa by this month, Feb, because Gabri's in New York now and I was supposed to go travel with him like after he finished his SMIR, like the medical school exam. But unfortunately, when I booked an appointment, the earliest appointment there was was for April 20 something, which is what I got. And the visa fee is 160 or 165. I'm not sure if that changed now, but in Madrid, that was a visa application fee. And the thing is that you have to pay the application fee first before you can see the appointment dates. So I was calling them and I was like, can I see or can I ask when's the earliest possible appointment like to check if I can actually like if it's worth it to apply that time because if I don't get it for February anyway, then it would be kind of pointless. But they said no, they couldn't tell me because I can only see the dates after I pay the application fee. And so I did, I paid for the application fee hoping that I could get an appointment maybe in that same year, but no. There was no appointment in 2023 and I did it in March, like early 2023. And there were no appointments for the entire year 2023 at all. And the earliest appointment for 2024 was in April. And that was what I got. But like in December, I got an email from the US embassy saying that they have like vacant ones and there's like only one chance that you can change it. So. I changed it to the earliest possible and that was today, February 22nd and it's a holiday in Madrid so I actually got quite lucky because I didn't have to miss school to go to the appointment and yeah, basically for the application you just need to fill in the DS-160 form and you need like a 2x2 two two photo and I used the photo that I used for my tie which I took in Malaga so I just used the old photo that I had because it's fine as long as it's six months old. And I took a picture of it. So I had like a physical photo. I took a picture of it because I didn't have a digital copy of it. So I just used my phone to take the picture and I uploaded it for the DS-160. So first step is you go to the website, fill out the DS-160 form. And then after that, you book your appointment date and then just wait till your appointment date comes and prepare for the document. After your DS-160 form is approved, you get a confirmation document from the US Embassy. And there it says that the following documents are required for all visa types. Your current passport and it has to be valid for at least six months beyond the period of stay your passport containing the most recently issued us visa only if applicable um your ds 160 form the confirmation page which is this one and two by two colored photo taken within the last six months and then it says accompanying family members unless entering the united states for another purpose should present a marriage certificate and aside from all those general requirements, it also states here that you may be asked to provide additional requested documents, including the purpose of your trip, the intent to depart the United States after your trip, your ability to pay the cost of your trip, and then if you can't afford your trip, you need the evidence that somebody else will cover your trip or like a part of your trip. 
And lastly, evidence of your employment or family ties if you're visiting a family member in the States to show the purpose of your trip and intend to return to your home country. But the thing is that I prepared all these documents, all of these. So I have the invitation letter from my boyfriend's mom, her bank statement, my bank statements, my job contract, a photocopy of my document. I printed all this, but during the visa interview, which was today, this morning, they didn't ask for a single thing. So I got there at like 9.05, my appointment was at 9, but it didn't really matter because when I got there, there was like such a long line. I'm showing you a picture. There was such a long line outside and I actually regretted not wearing a warmer coat because I had to stand in line for like maybe 20 minutes. So the time of my appointment didn't really matter. And then after that, when I got in, you have to turn your phone off. So I couldn't film anything, but I wasn't really planning on filming anything either, right? But they ask you to turn off your phone and you really need to do this because the guard speaks Spanish. So in case you don't understand Spanish, the guard said you need to turn off your phone because if you're using your phone inside, they literally take your visa away from you. Like you're just automatically denied for it. So please, when you go inside, just follow instructions. So I turned my phone off. Um, they took all my electronic devices. They confiscated my AirPods. They, they gave me like um, a slip to just collect it later, like when I finished with the appointment. And then you have to take off your coat, any metal thing. I took off my boots too. And then after that, I went inside. There's a person who will direct you like where you need to queue, where you need to go. So when I got in, the door was actually like pretty hard to push so like the couple behind me helped me open the door and then when i got in i just fell in line and then they first collect your two by two photo like that's there's one line for that and after they scan your two by two photo they direct you to a different line which is the line for your interview now for the interview um basically there's like four different windows for the interview and they speak spanish and english so you can choose whatever you want and then the woman who interviewed me was american she was really kind and basically she just asked me like three questions first question she's just like what's the purpose of your trip and i was like for tourism i'm gonna visit my boyfriend and his family in new york and the next question she asked was how long have you been living in Spain? And I said, I've been here for almost five years. And she's like, what are you doing here? Are you working? I said, yeah, I'm working as a language assistant since I came here since 2019. And then she asked me like when I plan to visit. And then I told her honestly that it was supposed to be for this month because my boyfriend is in New York now, but there wasn't any appointment until like this time. So I wasn't able to go. And then she was like, but your boyfriend is Spanish, right? Um, so I told her like, yeah, he's Spanish and he's also American, but he just recently passed his meeting, like the medical exam here in Spain. So yeah, he's going to be working in Spain. And then that's just it. After that, she just like typed stuff on the computer and then she was just like, your visa is approved. You can pick it up in two to six days. Thank you. Bye and that's just it like that's basically it. it didn't even last three minutes like i had to wait because she had to do some other stuff but like once the interview started it only lasted like three minutes and then that's it that's just it she didn't check a single document that i brought not a bank statement or whatever so i think she had all the information she needed or she wanted to know in the ds-160 form because the ds-160 form it's like five or six pages there are like tons of questions there like what are you planning to do what are you like where are you from what are you doing here what's your job da, da, da. so in that form i just answered it like in a very detailed manner i can't remember the exact questions but i just tried to give all the details in that application form and basically i think that's all they needed I provided bank statement. A friend told me that if you apply for a US visa, you need 10,000 euros, which is like 600,000 in peso as proof. And I didn't have that much. Like in my bank, I only had like three, five because I invest my money. So I also provided the account statement for my investment account, but they didn't ask for it anyway. So I don't think you need to like have a specific amount of show money, but I think it's very important that you state that you have a job and that you're sure that you're coming back here because there's something here that you're going to come back for. 
So in my case, it was my job. I printed my work contract and everything. She didn't check it, but I did state it in the DS-164. And maybe I look trustworthy. <laughs> I don't know. And I think one more important thing is your outfit, like how you present yourself. Aside from like smiling in the interview, I think one of the things that make you look trustworthy and like make it hassle-free is how you present yourself in the interview. So this is what I wore on my interview today. I tried to look as formal as possible. My interview was at nine. I woke up at eight and then I left within 20 minutes. Like I left at 8.20 and the night before I actually slept at like 2.30 because Gabby, who's in New York now, was doing teleparty with me because we're rewatching the Chinese drama called Hidden Love. I already watched it a long time ago and I highly recommend it. You guys should watch it. It's a very good one. I normally don't like Chinese dramas, but this one is very good. Anyways, that's just it for my US visa application. The process was very smooth, very fast, but the annoying thing was just the fact that you can't even see the appointment dates or the available appointment until you pay for the application fee. So there's that, but if it's not a problem for you anyway, like if you don't care whether you get an appointment in like two or three years, like as long as you're not in a hurry, then I think it's fine. And yeah, it said that I can get my passport back in two to six days. So I actually look for flights to New York and it's a lot cheaper than flights going to the Philippines. So I might go, I might miss school and go. I still have to see what happens, but if not, then I can just go in Christmas, though I don't really like cold weather. So maybe like in spring someday. But anyways, this visa, I believe is a 10 year entry. Like you can just go in and out as long as your stay is not more than 30 or 60 days, something like that. But yeah, my visa got approved. <laughs> I'm very happy about it because now I can just visit the States anytime I want, like in the future, maybe not now or maybe this year, yeah. And it was hassle-free, it was nothing close to Spain's bureaucratic system, which I was really relieved. I wasn't really nervous in an interview. I normally don't get nervous in interviews because I've had a lot like visa application or job applications. I've just had a lot, so I'm just like, yeah, we're friends, I'm gonna talk to you, whatever, ask me. So I don't know if that helped, but yeah, the people on the window beside me actually took longer than I did. Like they were there for like maybe say seven, eight minutes and mine was just like three minutes. So they were there first, but I finished even earlier. So yeah, if you guys have more questions about the US visa application process, you can just Ask me in the comments below or DM me on Instagram. You also have the link below. And if you're interested on videos like this, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And I'm going to be updating you guys with more things that I do here in Madrid and in my life. So yeah, that's just it. Bye.